Hi Chris here and I've got with me to unbox today the Xiaomi Mi 6. It's their new flagship mobile phone that's powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835. Adreno 540 GPU, six gigabytes of RAM. Now this model has 64 gigabytes of internal UFS2 storage. There's another model that has 128 gigabytes, but it's currently not out. So what has changed on this new model that I'm gonna look at? Well, we've now got a interesting dual camera setup. So two 12 megapixel sensors on the rear. One of them has four axis optical image stabilization. The other one has a fixed two times optical zoom. We also have a splash proof design. Now it's all made out of glass, the rear curved backing on it. And we do have a slightly larger battery, 3,350 milliamp hours. However, there's a big con for a lot of you out there, we've lost the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is sad to see. Anyway, enough talking, let's get this one unboxed and take a look at it in greater detail. This one I picked up from AliExpress, a seller called Hong Kong Goldway, and they shipped it out really quick and very pleased with them because they managed to get it out before the Labor Day holidays. So it's uh, well packed up. It should be still in the factory sealed wrapper because I asked them to not open it don't install Google Play, don't set it in English. So it's gonna have the Chinese ROM on there, of course, not the global one. It'll be English and Chinese only, but that's to be expected. So you can see, yes, it is still in the factory seal, which is great, and six gigabyte, 64 ROM version. Okay. So black is the only color that is available at the moment. Put the phone aside for a second and check the accessories we get. So they do include a premium case, just like the Mi Mix. I can see. I'm hoping that's going to be leather. No, it's not actually. It's just a TPU style one. Better than nothing though, so that's something. So we have instruction manual here. It's just telling you about the dual nano sims sim tool that's all in chinese and here's a different charger this time around but it's quick charge i can see that's rated to 12 volts and 1.5 amps what else we get of course is the cable you need for charging it so it's type c and there's also bundled in there sadly an adapter that we need now if you want to listen to music Okay, let's have a look at the weight. So it is a 171 grams. And the thickness comes in at 7.65 millimeters, which is quite thin. So it feels really good in hand. This has a quality feel to it, the build. And you've got this pre-applied transit screen protective course that you need to pull off. And there's another one on the back. And also one covering the two cameras. Now looking at the camera modules on the rear, we see we have a dual tone LED flash. Now the camera that's on the left, this one has four axis optical stabilization and the camera on the right, you can see with the larger lens will be our two times fixed optical 12 megapixel camera. On the bottom of the device, we've got the microphone, loudspeaker, type C port and two antenna lines. And on the top, a secondary microphone and an IR transmitter. On the right side of the Mi 6, the volume and power buttons. Now these don't rattle around, they have a really good feel to them. And on the left side of the mobile phone, we have the dual nano SIM tray. Unfortunately, there is no micro SD card support here, which is really sad to see. I wish they would add that. And you can see this rubber gasket that is around there. That is, of course, to stop any water getting in. And lastly, up the front, an 8 megapixel front facing camera, the earpiece, and there is an ambient light sensor in there, of course, too as well as a status LED. So right here next to my Samsung Galaxy S8, I must say that both of them have a very similar feel to them because they're both clad in glass, of course. Now you get the curved edges on the Mi 6, but you get the curves on both front and back on the Samsung Galaxy S8. And they both have a very similar sides to them. So the frames of both of them being painted in that glossy black paint job. So overall, the build quality of the Mi 6 is definitely premium. It feels top-notch. 
Okay, so time to power it on for the first time, go through the initial setup. And as mentioned, because it's the Chinese version, that it's only going to have Chinese and English on that. If you want other languages, then you're going to have to wait for the global ROM. Now, this should be running Android 7.1.1. I think it's the version that they advertised it with. So first impressions of the screen, it's great. It looks really good. In fact, I've seen a lot of this panel. This was, of course, on the Mi 5, the Mi 4, and the Mi 5S, and also the Mi 5C that I reviewed. It's a very nice 1080p panel. Okay, so we've got Asian languages, uh, Tibetan, English. And I can see that already, yes, it is detecting uh, wireless AC networks that are around from the neighbors. And I will add my fingerprint. Now I used this fingerprint reader in the Mi 5S and it worked out to be very good. Even if your hands are wet or damp, it will still read them. So I'm just gonna set up my super secure pin. Okay, so you need to do this about 10 times. I'm only gonna do it quickly for this video. Okay, that is done. You can of course add the same finger or other fingers if you want even more accuracy and options to unlock it. So I'm gonna go with the default theme. So setup that was reasonably quick. Okay, now to quickly check out that fingerprint reader performance, I'm going to now just lock the phone, simply place my thumb there that I of course set up and it unlocks instantly. So that is great to see. You don't need to wake the phone first, it's just a straight read and unlock and very quick at that. And just go through into the settings about phone quickly to have a look. So there you can see that it is running 8.2.13. I will connect up to the wireless, but it's Android version 7.1.1, which is good to see. Okay, so we've got 54 gigabytes free. That's a little bit to play around with, but you have to remember that you can't put your 100 gigabyte MP3 collection on this because there is no micro SD card slot. And for those of you out there that want to know the finer hardware details about it, you can see here, this is the screen information, that what screen it's using, and more importantly there, the camera sensors. So we've got a Sony IMX386 as one of the back cameras. Then the auxiliary one is a Samsung sensor, which is the S5K3M3. And the front camera is another Sony, the IMX268. So I've got Antutu Benchmark 6.2.7 there finishing up and you can see that's a really good score, 182,000. And there's the finer details there. For those of you interested, you can compare that to your existing mobile phone. So really good score. So here now in CPU-Z, I just wanted to show you very quickly the sensors, because I know a lot of people ask that, what sensors does it have on board? So I'll quickly list them. But before I do that, you can see free available RAM at the moment is uh, 3.4 gigabytes. Now on first boot, it's about 4.3 gigabytes. I've got Antutu Benchmark running in the background. So just clicking over now into the sensors very quickly, run through here. So you see we've got a accelerometer, gyroscope, pressure even. Did not expect to see that there. A lot of sensors on there, and sorry, don't want to scroll too fast. And of course, an ambient light sensor is that one right there detecting the uh, lux value. Okay, so with the audio, there is a deal breaker for some people. They've removed that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and they've decided, no, we're going to go Type C digital only, like Apple and follow Apple's lead like they always seem to do. They're good at copying, aren't they, like that? However, they have added in at least a front-facing loudspeaker right here in the earpiece, just like the Li Echo Li Pro 3 that I reviewed. Let's have a listen to it, how it sounds, and most importantly, how loud it is. I have my decibel meter right here. All right, that actually topped out around 95 decibels, which is really quite loud. So at least they've got the volume there. Now there is a hint of distortion at 100% volume. I can hear some sort of vibration coming out of those speakers. They, of course, lack bass. It's mostly just mids and treble coming out of the speakers. 
So I've only had the phone literally for a few hours and I've already discovered a bug. I've already had the launcher crash on me. So the current ROM is far from stable. If I go into gallery, I want to view my photos and this is what happens. Gallery stops responding. It does not work. It keeps popping up with an error message asking me if I wish to wait or okay it and close it. Now I'll go again back here, free up the memory while we'll try and close it, sorry. There we go. Back into gallery. There's my photos. I want to see that photo I just took of my dog. Come on. Hello. No. So it's been released with a completely unstable ROM. Not good to see at all. So Xiaomi have really emphasized on their camera performance on this model, the Mi 6. Of course, with two cameras on there, they're really pushing ahead. And I cross my fingers and hope that they have improved their camera quality because it has been, in their previous flagships, disappointing, never up to the quality of the likes from HTC, Apple, Samsung, all of the other major brands. They just never come close. So hopefully that is going to change. So first up, we've got this little, you can see one times and tapping that two times. So what that's doing is using the second sensor now, which doesn't have the stabilization. And that is how we're going to be able to zoom in. There's also this new little setting here I can see on the left, which goes into uh, portrait mode. So it's going to do those um, bokeh blurred backgrounds for you. So hopefully the subject's going to be in focus and then the background will all be blurred out like you've got some crazy low aperture lens, even though it's a mobile phone. So I'll have to test that out later on. Now modes we have here, uh, you can see these are all the typical. So nothing really too interesting in there apart from the um, manual settings. Sorry, that I just went into. Uh, I just killed that off, went back into auto, sorry. There we go. So we've got white balance, focus, exposure time. There's a few things we can change there. And you can change which lens you want. The wide lens or then the tele, which of course is the, uh, the two times zoom lens there. And into the camera mode. We don't seem to have any controls here to select what you want to use, what camera you want to use. So we're forced to use the four axis optical image stabilized one instead of the two times zoom, I, I believe. But perhaps that could change. Here you can see that video quality goes up to 4K, um, continual autofocus. Sadly, where's the 1080p 60 frames per second option? No, that isn't there. You don't get that still with Xiaomi's flagships. So I'm going to go outside now, take some sample images. There will be a camera review coming up later on, but here that's just going to be a preview from the front and rear cameras, video quality too as well. So I'm shooting with the rear camera now. This is the 4-axis optical image stabilized camera. You can't use the fixed 2 times zoom camera. Not at the moment. I wish they would add that with a firmware update. So I'm going to go, some, go down some stairs here just to test out the stabilization. Seems to be doing an okay job. And I wonder if it's also incorporating electronic image stabilization like my Galaxy S8 does. So let's have a look now at the front facing 8 megapixel camera. It's now the front facing camera, so it has 8 megapixels now, they've changed from that 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera they used to use. I can see here that the sensor is struggling a little bit with the bright background, but the further I get away from it now it's bringing my face into exposure a lot better. Now looking at the screen, the quality seems reasonably good, uh, 1080p maximum, no 4K from the front camera like some other mobiles can do, like the Vivo X9 I looked at.
So there we have it, that's the unboxing there. And overall, my first impressions, well, pfft, look at this software. We're still getting crashes. What's going on? Show me your software lately. The Mi 5C, then the Mi Pad 3, completely unstable ROMs on them. And they were apparently, well, they were stable ROMs. That's the release version. Yes, you saw this box was completely factory sealed. It's not like this has a third party ROM on there. It's not a hacked developer ROM or anything like that. So they've got to get their act together, sort out the software on this. The hardware on it, very nice, feels great in hand, looks like a great mobile phone. The camera performance is good from what I can see, but I need more time on it. This is just my first impressions there. I need to go out in low light, of course, take some more photos and find out just how well both of those rear sensors perform. A little disappointing to see that we can't use the optical, two times optical zoom in video mode. They force us to use the um, optical image stabilized video mode, which is, yeah, you know, it's not the best. Um, also disappointing, there's no 3.5 minute headphone jack. I personally can live without that. I know there are people out there that cannot. So I will be back with benchmarks, everything in the full review I can think of. So the audio quality as well, call quality, um, just how really everything is in using this because I will be using this. I'll put my Galaxy S8 aside and this will then be the only phone I will use during that time. So I'll report everything back in the full review. Thank you so much for watching and do remember that you can win one of these, not this particular one, but a brand new Mi 6. There's a competition. Have a look in the description. There's a link there. Another video where you can enter in for the draw to win one of these. So best of luck and thank you so much for watching this initial first video on the Mi 6.